module four, specific control measures. We can look at engineering controls and personal protective equipment. Regulation seven of COSH follows a hierarchical approach. We know there's hierarchy of controls in other regulations, but in COSH, it follows eliminate exposure, substitute the substance, modify the work process, total exposure, engineering controls, minimizing the numbers of people exposed, personal protective equipment. For this module, we're going to focus initially on engineering controls. On tool extraction. So on tool extraction removes dust as it is being produced. It's a type of local exhaust ventilation, LEV, that fits directly onto the tool. You can see in the photograph there, the tubing coming back from the tool. So the system in total consists of the tool, the capturing hood, the extraction unit, and also the tubing. And it takes the dust into an extraction unit, which must be the correct specification, i.e. high, medium, or low. You must remember that we can't just use a general commercial vacuum. We're going to decide on what actual filtration system to use from our risk assessment, from the COSH risk assessment we mentioned earlier on, on tool extraction. We're now going to look at a video of uncontrolled dust release while chasing, chasing remembering that well, uh, that silica has a well of 0.1 milligrams per meter of cubic air. So uncontrolled, you can see the dust in the room. You can see the levels of dust quickly reaching over five. Uncontrolled. And what happens when we use on tool extraction? Looking again on the right hand side, the levels of dust, it's not yet actually registering. Just on the chart. So there's a big difference then in between the uncontrolled and when controlled. So dry sweeping, another time when on site, that's going to create sometimes a lot of dust. So we can follow the assess, prevent and control model from the HSE we mentioned earlier. When we look at assess, we've got to look at the risk because the risk depends on how much, what material is actually being brushed up, how long the material is being brushed and whether we're in a confined space. How can we prevent it? Well, we can limit the amount of waste being cut, so the amount of dust being created. So we can consider where the waste is created, it could be used outside rather than inside, and then using correct dust controls. So let's have a look at the controls. So number one, we've got hand tools. So what could we do? We could damp down, use a brush, shovel and bucket for small amounts. For regular removal or site cleaning, we could use a water spray for damping down and then a rake and shovel and a bucket and wheelbarrow to remove larger amounts. We can also use on tool extraction for sweeping and for fine materials, we could use a vacuum attachments fitted to a H or an M, so it's a high or medium class extraction unit. Another method of control, which always comes last, is RPE with an assigned protection factor of 20, that's a FFP3, disposal or half mask with a P3 filter. And now a video on uncontrolled dry sweeping. So again, remembering the well is set at 0.1, and you can see here it's well above 0.1. So 
So what if we use controlled vacuuming? How does that change the situation? Not yet registered. So it's well below the well. 0 0.1. Didn't even register on the chart. So other engineering controls, we have water suppression. So as we can see there on a cutoff saw, so as we know, water will damp down the dust clouds. However, it needs to be used correctly. So this means that we have enough water supplied at the right levels for the whole time that the work is actually being done. If we just wet the material before the work, that will not work. And our video of uncontrolled use on a cutoff saw. So again, thinking of the well, 0.1, this time the chart goes all the way up to 70. You can see a lot of dust being made. I think we've probably all seen that on a construction site. And I should imagine the HSC prosecution we were talking about earlier, that's probably what the situation would have been like. So absolutely well above the workplace exposure limit there. And now with suppression, So they're charging the water container. You can see a little bit of dust being created. Remembering it's a time weighted average that is over eight hours. Again, another big difference there when uncontrolled. And that's engineering controls. So now we can look at personal protective equipment and in particular RP, respiratory protective equipment. So what actually is RP? So there's two main types and they are respirators and breathing apparatus. Respirators which are filtering devices. These use filters to remove the contaminants from the air when being breathed in. And they can be either non-powered respirators which rely on the wearer's breathing to draw air through the filter or powered respirators which use a motor to pass air through the filter to give a supply of clean air RPE tight fitting masks so here we look at some extracts from HSG 53 respiratory protective equipment at work fantastic HSG document and there we have a disposable half mask a reusable half mask and a full face mask so these masks as it says there they are tight fitting so they're only going to use if we have a good seal around the face there are also loose fitting masks where face fit is not required and here we can see the helmet we can see the breathing hose from the back and we can actually see the fan unit with a filter battery and belt Loose fitting does not require a face fit. Looking at some classifications which are generally used on site, two main classifications when working with construction dusts are FFP2 and FFP3. FFP stands for filtering face piece. FFP3, that's uh, a mask with an assigned protection factor of 20 is advisable when doing work that does or could create high dust levels or involve silica or wood dust because these are the more hazardous substances. Fit testing. We know that RP must always be the last resort as a control measure but where it is used it must be able to provide adequate protection for individual wearers. RPE cannot protect the wearer if it leaks and a major cause of leaks is poor fit. Tight fitting face pieces need to fit the wearer's face to be effective. Remembering that we're all different. As people come in all sorts of shapes and sizes it's unlikely that one particular type or size of RPE face piece will fit all individuals. This means you're going to have to go out 
and probably get a number of various masks. And it's only with fit testing that you will work that out. Fit testing will ensure that the equipment selected is suitable for the wearer and remembering that wearers must be clean shaven. Fit testing is often, often a, a, a contentious issue on site, but as has been said here, unless you're fit tested and unless you're clean shaven, then you can't expect your RP to work. So coming to the end of module four, Another recap, a confirmation of knowledge. Engineering controls such as water suppression and on tool extraction greatly reduce the amount of dust. And we saw that from the videos that we watched. Dry sweeping should be avoided where possible, of course. We've seen using a vacuum and we also talked about using damping down and then using the rake, shovel and bucket. RP, respiratory protective equipment, will always be the last resort as a control measure. FFP2 and FFP3 are recommended for construction dusts, but FFP3, when assigned protection factor of 20, should be used for silica and wood dust because they are more hazardous. Tight fit in face masks require a face fit test. And wearers of tight fit and RPE must always be clean shaven. Thank you for watching and good luck with your assessment.